Hey guys, Wet Movie One back here again for another Blu-ray DVD update video for you guys today. It's been about two weeks or so since my last one. I have about 19 new Blu-rays and DVDs here to talk to you guys about today in this video. But guys, my mom should be popping in a little bit later on with her guest reviews this week. Let's get started with it. First up here from Paramount is the best picture of the year, in my opinion, is The Wolf of Wall Street here, directed by Martin Scorsese, starring Leonardo DiCaprio and Jonah Hill and a, a bevy of other people. If you guys don't know this movie, it's a, it's a story about Jordan Barefoot. Uh, he's a stockbroker on uh, Wall Street. He decides to start up his own firm from the ground up and this movie is just the story of that, following him and showing him and how he works in Wall Street and how he screws people out of money and how he, he becomes a gazillionaire, a millionaire. And uh, this movie is based on a true story of a, of a, of a real stockbroker. And uh, I found this movie to be super entertaining it's one of those ones that's real it's like three or like three and a half hours or something long but it, it didn't feel long to me you guys all know I saw this movie this past uh, a couple months ago at the movie theater with uh, Jose and his wife and uh, I fell in love with this film because going into it seeing the running time I was going oh my god this is gonna bore me you know but it's, it's also Martin Scorsese so I'm like Hmm, how is he going to hold my interest? But they really do. It's, it's like the, all the performances across the board just like blew me away, especially Jonah Hill. Jonah Hill recently has been really knocking it out of the park with me. I've always liked him since like super bad and things like the quirky, weird comedy stuff. But he does pretty good when it comes to like drama films and other stuff, you know? I, I, I really, I'm really looking forward to seeing what Jonah Hill's going to do in the future. But uh, guys, definitely check out Wolf of Wall Street. The picture quality on this Blu-ray here is outstanding. But the only thing is on here, special feature wise, is a 15 minute or 16 minute making of uh, the film on here. That's all you really get. I have a feeling there's probably going to be like a special edition or so uh, down the line with this one, like commentaries and like, you know, deleted scenes and a whole bunch of other stuff. But if you guys have never seen this movie before, the best movie of uh, 2013, in my opinion, please guys, definitely check this one out. Absolutely love this one. All right, guys, next up from Universal is uh, another movie I've been dying to check out. It came out a few years ago in China, I believe. But you guys all know I'm a super big Jackie Chan fan. I even have like a whole big shelf just like dedicated to all his movies on DVD, Blu-ray, and what have you. I've been collecting his stuff, even his old 70s movies. Been a big fan of him. And when I found out about this movie coming out, I'm like, oh man, I have to get my hands on one of these because I, I definitely want to check it out. And it's called The Chinese Zodiac here on a Blu-ray digital copy combo pack. And this one's actually uh, produced and uh, directed by Jackie Chan and starring him also. And in this movie, he plays this... Uh, this one guy that loves to go on adventures and he works for this like Chinese government to try to retrieve old Chinese relics that were stolen uh, back in the day from uh, from China like things like he you know like bronze heads and things and he's trying to find them with a crew of people and this is pretty much the adventure along the way of him going to these different countries to try to retrieve them and try to find where they were because some of them were auctioned off to some uh, really rich people but you know they really belong to China so it's pretty much him and his team trying to go and uh, retrieve these things to bring them back to the country they belong to um, I, I, I really did like this film because I love Jackie Chan but the story was really kind of hard to follow I, I kind of got lost in translation because I was watching the watching it dubbed and sometimes you lose a little bit of something when you watch it that way but you, the action stuff here with Jackie Chan doing his like you know flippity dippity stuff you know like sliding down like you know staircases and like flipping over couches and things are oh it's always a lot of fun to watch him do even though you know he's using a little bit of wires now he's not like he's not risking his life anymore trying to like do death defying stunts and anything like that anymore but that's fine you know he's, he's getting up there in age and I don't want to see him hurt himself or anything doing this, cr this crazy stuff but uh, I, I would recommend you guys checking this out if, checking this out if you're a diehard Jackie Chan fan because even at the end of this film during the credit sequence you get the famous you know uh, gag reel um, of him like you know like, trying to do a stunt and him like messing up or getting hurt or and stuff like that and there's even like a nice little tribute to Jackie Chan during the credits here where like they show clips of all his older movies and different stunts that he's done throughout the years I thought that was a absolutely a, a nice little tribute they did to him but like this movie really did feel like Indiana Jones but with Jackie Chan in it you know that that's that's the kind of vibe I got with this film I liked it but it storyline is just kind of like Neh. You know, it's, it's kind of weak, but the action, action stuff is cool. Looks absolutely beautiful on Blu-ray. The Chinese Zodiac here on Blu-ray. Check it out, guys, if you're a Jackie Chan fan. 
But uh, next up over here is Jason, Jason Statham's new film called Homefront here on Blu-ray, also starring James Franco. Um, in this film, uh, Jason Statham uh, is an ex-undercover uh, officer. He moved, he's now moved to a small city. He's kind of retired from his job. He's, he's you know, he's living, he's living his, the rest of his life out with his uh, young daughter in a small town, just, you know, trying to get away from old things. But yet his past catches up with him, and he's trying to say, then he has to try to save his daughter life and the people that he made friends with his life you know in the process um it's a, it's a really kind of generic action film but i did kind of like watching it because i'm a fan of james franco and i just like to see his little quirky performances and films it looks really good on blu-ray it's also uh produced and i believe written by sylvester stallone and uh, you even get stallone on here talking about uh, how, you know, the writing process and things like that. I've been a fan of Stallone for years. But uh, it, it is worth watching at least once. But it's just one, it's just kind of like, you know, the uh, by, by the books kind of action flick, you know? You're not really going to remember it that, you know, that much or anything. It's like really kind of forgettable. But, uh, you know, it is worth watching once. I like Jason Statham. He's cool. But that's Homefront here on Blu-ray. Okay, guys, next up is Welcome to the Jungle here on Blu-ray, starring Dennis Haysberg, uh, John claude Van Damme, and Adam Brody. Uh, in this film, Adam Brody plays a down-on-his-luck office worker that always gets picked on in his office. You know, his, his ideas are always getting stolen from other people in the office, and he's always getting really mad about it, but he never does anything about it. But yet the morale of his team are, are, is all kind of down. So his, his boss, played by Dennis Haysberg, tells everybody in the office, you guys are all going to go on a retreat. Go on this island and just like, you know, to try to boost morale. But yet his whole team, his whole office, you know, goes out to this island led by uh, John claude Van Damme, who's hired to show them around. And as soon as they get to this island, something happens to their plane. They get stranded on this island. And it's pretty much them trying to figure out what are they going to do to survive and how are they going to get off this island? But it's done in such a wacky, crazy, kind of over-the-top way. I absolutely love this movie. And, uh, of course, like, some of his co-workers are going crazy and, like, turning into, like, Lord of the Flies. You know, like, going all nuts and, like, I'm the leader of this clan now. You follow me. And, like, half the other co-workers are like, yes, I follow you. Like, it's, it's, it gets really kind of wacky and over-the-top. And that's what I really liked about this film. They don't, they, they don't take it too seriously when they're making this. Absolutely loved it. Welcome to the jungle. It's not like a big action flick like you would see like Van Damme do like wow you know like cry kicking people every five seconds or anything like that. It's more of a comedy than anything but I do highly recommend this one. It is worth watching at least once and on this uh, Blu-ray here uh, you get like a like an hour long making of documentary of the film which I wasn't even expecting to see a long thing like that on this Blu-ray of just like interviews and behind the scenes footage. I'm like an hour long for a movie like this? I'm like what? But uh, definitely check this out. It was worth the watch guys welcome to the jungle here on blu-ray all right guys next up from anchor bay is a film i've been dying to see for the last couple of years now and that is the return to nukem high here on blu-ray directed by laurie kaufman the king of tromaville and the creator of the toxic avenger you guys all know i've been a super fan of trauma ever since like junior high when i first ever saw my very first trauma film but before i get into my review of this you don't have to watch the original uh, cl uh class of nukem high series to get what's going on in here because they have like a little a nice little recap right at the beginning of this film because in, in, the, in the original trilogy there's a nuclear power plant built on you know right next to this uh, Tromaville High School and then of course like kids started getting mutated and getting affected by the nuclear stuff that's happening around them and uh, turning into mutants and you know creating havoc and in this one, uh, you know, the power plant has been bulldozed, it's been destroyed, it's no longer there. But in its place, right behind the high school, it's now an organic food company, which is built right on top of the, you know, the, gr the ground of uh, all this toxic stuff that was happening. And some of their food that they've been, you know, producing has some of this toxic waste in it. And of course, they're, they're serving the food to the high school. And of course, one of the kids in the school eats one of the eats one of the tacos that's you know infected you know with uh, toxic waste and turns into you know a very mutant creature like spitting up green slime everywhere. Then everyone else slowly starts turning into you know crazy mutated creatures and is you know going crazy all over Tromaville. If you guys are a fan of Troma and their style of filmmaking, you're gonna absolutely love this film. 
But uh, this is this is part one of of, of two because this is uh, Return of Nukem High Volume One, and uh, it's just a really wacky, over the top movie. And that's what I like about Troma. They don't take themselves too super serious, and you know they don't care about you know like what the studios are gonna think. They don't have like different producers breathing down their necks like don't do that, don't do this, don't say that, you can't do this. They just go and make they make art. They have fun making these movies and you totally see that you know in stuff like this and Poetry Guys Night of the Chicken Dead and you know Tromeo and Juliet and all the uh, other cool trauma movies that came out over the years that's Return of Nukem High guys definitely check it out you get about 25 minutes of like behind it you know of uh you know, special features on here, you get commentary tracks, you get a making of on here, which is uh, really cool. But definitely check it out, Return of Nukem High. But uh, next up over here from Warner Brothers is, is something I, I just had to see because I like Scooby-Doo and I love wrestling. I love, you know, WWE or WWF, whatever you guys want to call it these days. And that is uh, Scooby-Doo and the WrestleMania Mystery. And uh, this is where uh, Scooby-Doo and Shaggy... Uh, they're playing these video. They're playing this one wrestling video game. They're super big wrestling fans. They're like, oh my god! And, and and they beat the game. And the price that they get for beating the game is tickets to WrestleMania. And uh, in this in this uh, movie here, it's pretty much Shaggy and Scooby trying to you know get the gang to drive them down to WWE City because in this movie they have uh, WWE City where like all the wrestlers go and hang out and have restaurants named after them and things like that. And to, to go down there, and of course, they go down to WWE City, they meet Vince McMahon, they meet John Cena, and like, they're going crazy, like, oh my god, I love you guys, and things like that, but yet, as soon as they get there, they find out about this crazy mystery that's been plaguing WWE City for decades, which is like the, the, the mysterious ghost bear that's been like prowling around and commit, you know, committing all this crazy, these crazy acts. And of course, the, you know, Scooby-Doo and the team are there to try to solve the mystery. But in the meantime, all the wrestlers are there doing their thing. I really did kind of enjoy this thing. And, you, you know, you really get the voice talent here of Triple H. Uh, you get the voice talent in there of like... Uh, um, Vince McMahon and John Cena in there and a handful of other wrestlers and divas and things I thought that was kind of cool and there's a special there's also a special feature on here where Vince McMahon Triple H and um, The Miz and all these other wrestlers talking about how excited they were to be a part of a, a Scooby-Doo movie but if you're a WWE fan and you like Scooby-Doo, check it out. It is kind of kiddish at some points, of course, because it's a family thing. But I kind of, I kind of enjoyed it just to see Vince McMahon trying to, you know, do <laughs> do his thing in an animated film. It's kind of funny. But that's Scooby-Doo and the WrestleMania mystery. And uh, next up over here from Lionsgate is a, a, an action film, a new one from Dolph Lundgren, and it's called Puncture Wounds here on DVD. And uh, it's about this one guy played by Chun Li here. Um, he's a is a war veteran. He just came back from fighting on, in Iraq. He's going through like you know post you know uh, post war problems. Like he's always like remembering you know what happened back where when he was in, in the war. He's suffering from that. He's trying to live his life, trying to get a job. You know, just trying to you know just trying to you know keep his life going. But yet one night he's at this hotel because that's where he's living now, and he sees this one girl outside of the hotel getting messed with with a, a by a group of guys pushed around choked and he goes out there and like beats all these guys' asses yet the girl yells at him for doing so he's like I'm here to, I'm here to try to help you you're you're getting hurt she's like you don't know what you just did you know and cuz the people he just beat up or like you know part of these like this drug ring that's going on that's led by Dolph Lundgren and then Dolph Lundgren finds out what happens and tries to find him but yet the only way they can try to hurt him is by his family and it's pretty much him trying to protect his family and himself and try to figure out what the hell did he just get involved in I, I kind of like this one it's kind of generic a little bit the acting is kind of like yeah it, it was it was kind of watchable for a, 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 at least a one time watch but uh, Dolph Lundgren's actually pretty kind of you know pretty cool in this thing he has like a weird crazy like long wig thing that he's doing I, it could be his hair but I think it's a wig in this one but uh, that's Puncture Wounds. Check it out. It's alright. Like the guy right here, Chung Lee, like the, the war veteran, kind of reminds, the way he's acting in this kind of reminds me of Don the Dragon Wilson, who you guys all know from like Magic Kid and the Blood Fist movies and things like that. The way he's acting, it, it feels like that's what he was emulating, is that uh, Don the Dragon. Alright guys, next up is Siberia here, season 1 on DVD. This is another like reality show, kind of like, you know, Amazing Race or Survivor and stuff like that. 
uh, about 16 uh, reality show contestants going down to this island called, you know, in Siberia, trying to figure out what are they, they going to do, like, challenges that they, they have to do. But in the meantime, they're on this island, and on the first episode that you see, someone gets killed. And they don't know what happened or what the hell it was that killed them, and it's pretty much them trying to figure out, are they going to stay on this island, or are they going to keep on competing to win this money that they really need in their lives and things. That's pretty much the, you know, thing of this uh, show here. But uh, it, it was really kind of a generic, um, you know, reality show. Like, when, you, when I popped it in, I'm like, wow. You know, like, these, this is fake as hell. You know what I mean? Like, it's one of those kind of things. Kind of like Survivor and some of those other things. Like, you know, they're like actors just there doing their thing. But sometimes you can, like, let that go. But in this one, I was just like, wow. That person is really trying to act right here. It's just like those things that you see like in Survivor where they have to like, you know, they have these little competitions with each other and like see who wins and then if you lose you get voted off the island kind of thing. But you know, it's just what, you know, what happens when on the first episode when someone dies and it's just them going, oh, am I staying or am I going to go? What's going on here? Kind of thing. But it was just really hard to get into because it just seemed really put on and kind of fake. I, I really, I really, really couldn't get into it. It lasted about 11 episodes uh, of season one here. I only got through like maybe like four episodes, and I'm just like, oh, oh, I, I can't do it. Any I can't do it anymore. But that's Siberia here, season one. Hello, it's me again. Just stopping by with two of my picks for this week. The first one, now you know me and my TV series. Well, this one I've never heard of before. It's called Rogue, and it stars Sandy Newton as Grace Travis, an undercover detective in the crime organization of Jimmy Laszlo, played by Martin Kosakis. Well, when tragedy strikes her family and her son is murdered, and a person or high-up person in the crime boss's organization is also murdered, they join forces to find out who did this. And to me, that's really intriguing. Most of the time in your cop shows, you've got the bad guy and the good guys, the good guys trying to get the bad guys, whether they're undercover or not. Well, in this one, they join forces. So I really, really like it. They've got great uh, supporting characters and, you know, kooky, weird type of characters. I'm basically on the second disc, and I'm still intrigued, and I really don't know if this had a second season or not, but if it did, I'll hunt it down and watch it, too. Really cool. I liked it. And my last pick for this week, I loved this movie, Saving Mr. Banks, starring Tom Hanks and Emma Thompson. It's about Walt Disney's 20-year pursuit to obtain the rights to the author P.L. Travers's book, Mary Poppins. Now, I know when I was growing up, I loved that movie so much, and this is the backstory that helped produce that movie. It's it, really incredible. Some of the characters, uh, the two brothers that wrote the music and lyrics for the movie are in it. And uh, as a side note, one of the actual brothers, Richard Sherman, is in one of the special features. So it's just incredible to see his perspective because he was actually there. It also has a side story. I'm not going to tell you much about it, but it's a running side story along the side of this movie, and it's about her, P.L. Travers's childhood in Australia. So, you're not going to know what the title Saving Mr. Banks is really about till the end of the movie. Give it a look-see. It was wonderful. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you later. And uh, next up over here from Disney is a, a sequel to a movie that I've never, you know, a, a sequel that I've never seen before. And I'm a fan of the original one. And that is Jungle Book 2 here on Blu-ray, uh, DVD, digital copy, combo pack here. I love the original film with Mowgli and Baloo and, you know, Shere Khan and all that stuff. It's pretty much about Mowgli, the guy that, gets in the, that lives in the, in the forest. He gets lost in the forest and he ends up living with the animals. And, you know, he, he, that, that's his life. He, he knows the, the animal life. But yet, at the end of the first one, he gets brought back to the man village, you know, where all the humans are. Because this one tiger played, you know, played by Shere Khan is after him. So, like, it's pretty much Blue and his adventure trying to get, you know, his friend to the man village so he can be taken care of. 
And at the end of that film, he, he's he's with his family again and things like that. But at the beginning of part two, he's he you know he's still living with his family. He has a little brother now, and you know, he still he still has that little that girl that he, you saw in the first film that he kind of fell in love with. But yeah, he's, he's he still feels kind of out of place there. Baloo, he's in the woods trying to go. Man, where the hair's my little buddy? I haven't seen him in a while. And it's pretty much him trying to go visit, you know, Mowgli at the Man Village. And, and this is pretty much, you know, Mowgli and Baloo getting back together again, having a little, another little adventure in the woods. That's pretty much it. This sequel wasn't really needed. I was watching it for the very first time, uh, th this today actually, and this thing was just kind of like, eh? Like, it was just like, really nothing was going on. There's like really no p big plot to this movie. It's, I was watching it for the first 20 minutes going, what's the plot of this movie? So there's like nothing really going on in it, but uh, it is watch it is watchable if you guys are if you have kids and stuff at home. But it, it is kind of cool because uh, Baloo is voiced by John Goodman in this film, and Mowgli is now voiced by Haley Joel Osment, who you guys all know from like The Sixth Sense and things like that. I thought that was kind of cool, but it's just really kind of forgettable, you know. Like there's really not much going on in it. The animation is kind of weird, especially compared to the first one that was like what 40 years earlier. Because so I believe this one came out in 2003. But, uh, you know, watching it for the very first time, it's just kind of like, eh, it was okay, not amazing, just kind of like, eh, you know, kind of thing, like you shrug your shoulders after you watch it. Um, next up over here is a movie I missed in the theaters and I was just dying to see. I don't know why I didn't, I didn't go out to go see it in the movie theater, but now I got to check it out. And that is called American Hustle here on DVD. Um, this one was, of course, nominated for... Uh, Best Picture, it didn't win, it went to 12 Years a Slave, which, uh, you know, I got in a Hoarding Up video, which I'll probably talk about this one sooner or later. Uh, I don't think that one really deserved to be Best Picture. I, I, I think Wolf of Wall Street should have. But uh, American Hustle here stars uh, Christian Bale, uh, Bradley Cooper, Amy Adams, Jeremy Renner. But uh, in this film, uh, Christian Bale and Amy Adams are small-time hustlers that run this, this little business that they have, you know, in the back of this, uh, what's it called, um cleaners or something and they're like hustling like small t you know people that out of their money until FBI gets involved and they're trying to con them into conning other people and then it, it just gets like a big con after con after another until it gets mixed up with mobsters and politicians and it, it gets really kind of crazy I can't explain it all without ruining things but I really love the time setting of this film of set in the 70s and I love the music the costumes and I thought Christian Bale really knocked it out of the park in this one you know what I mean like he wasn't Batman in this one like, he put on all this weight for his role in this film like he's not obese like my ass is but like you know he, he really put on this weight in this movie and uh, I really liked everyone's performance in this they did they really did knock it out of the park there's all these different like stories going on at once and I was gonna be like wait a minute am I gonna be able to follow all of this and they it, it, they really did but definitely check out American Hustle, guys. If you guys haven't seen it yet, it's really worth watching. I don't know if it's one of those ones that has a high rewatch value, you know, to me. Like, it is worth watching at least once. But, like, I don't know if I'm going to be needing to watch it again. Because, like, I already know what happens. You know what I mean? But that's uh, American Hustle here. Check it out if you have never seen it before. It really is worth watching. Uh, next up over here from Sony is the Hungover Games here on Blu-ray. You know, another one of those spoof movies. But this one, they're spoofing the Hangover and uh, the Hunger Games and L in one and a handful of other things like Ted and, you know, uh, all these different Johnny Depp movies and things. And this one is where the Hangover crew gets put in to the Hunger Games uh, thing where they have to fight for, for survival against, you know, uh, Katniss and against, you know, a whole bunch of all the other people and try to stay alive. It's really wacky and kind of over the top like you would expect for one of these things. But you know what? For, as a spoof movie, I really dug it. It, it wasn't bad. You know, I, I, I really... I really can get behind this one. You get Jamie Kennedy in there, who you guys all know from the Scream movies and Son of the Mask and things like that. And bro, what happened to the movie I was in whenever that comes out. And, um, quick plug. And uh, he, I believe he was like a producer and writer on this film. And I, I really like him. I really like him in movies where he can play like really quirky, like over the top kind of characters. Because you don't really see him in much of stuff anymore these days. And I, I kind of really like him. I want him to come back and make, like, make another comeback or something. But uh, that's the Hungover Games here on Blu-ray. Looks fantastic on, uh, um, on HD here. Definitely check it out. If you guys are into spoof films, it's not that bad, you know, for what it is. You know what I mean? It's the Wrath of Vajra here on Blu-ray. And in this movie, there's this monk. He's just living his life, you know, being a monk. But he has a, he has a dark past. Because when he was a child, he was kidnapped from his family 
forced into this, like, you know, like, prison kind of camp where he was trained to become an assassin and kill for this world war that's going on, and yet he ended up escaping that life. But yet, you know, he escaped the life to become a monk and, you know, just forget about his past and what happened. But yet his past is catching up with him because all the little monks that are living there with him in this, at this temple got kidnapped and brought to the same place that he was at when he was a kid. And it's pretty much the mission that he has to go on to bring back the kids that were kidnapped from his, from his temple that he's at. And, you know, like, relive what hell exactly happened again with him and his brother and his whole, you know, his dark past. And then all the, like, really cool action stuff along the way. I really, really dug this film. I, I, I got every single story, every little story thing that was going on in it. None, none of this was lost in translation to me. Because there wasn't, real, there wasn't really a big story going on in it to begin with. But I really did like it. The story's cool. The action scenes are awesome. It's like pretty much people fighting to the death. If you go into a fight in this movie, and it's either you live or you die. You know what I mean? Like, if you want to keep living, you better, be, you better be the winner of this fight kind of thing. But that's the Wrath of Vajra here on Blu-ray. Absolutely love it. If you guys see it out there, please, please check this out if you're a martial art fan. I like this one very much. And uh, next up from uh, Comedy Central is Jeff Dunham's uh, new film, or uh, new animated film, called Ahmed. In America, or Ahmed Saves America here on Blu-ray. You guys all know Jeff Dunham. He's the comedian that, uh, you know, ha you know, he's like the ventriloquist that has all his dummies and stuff. And Ahmed, the dead terrorist, uh, the main star of this film, is uh, his like most known one. Um, I've never been a super big fan of Jeff Dunham, but yet I, I kind of wanted to check this out to see what was, you know, what was this, what was it all about? And it's pretty much about Ahmed, the dead terrorist character. Um, Getting, getting shot over to Americaville, because in the movie it's called Americaville, and, and how he's, he lives with Americans, yet he hates all of us Americans and wants to like blow us up and stuff, and that's how he talks in the movie. But yet every single person that he sees in Americaville are like very nice to him, like treating him nicely, and he's like, what is going on? I still hate you, infidels, and like all this like crazy stuff. But yeah, it's pretty much him and how he falls in love with people of America. I don't know, it, it, it was just kind of like a, medi a mediocre kind of animated film. But you also get a making of featurette on here with Jeff Dunham, like five minutes long, talking about the process of making this animated, uh, sh animated feature here, which is only about like 60 minutes long. It's okay, it wasn't amazing, it was just kind of like, eh, it's worth watching once, kind of thing. Um, and next up over here from Cinedime is Easy Money, Hard to Kill here on Blu-ray. This is a part two of uh, the trilogy of films called of, of the part of the Easy Money franchise. And uh, in this film, this one guy named J.W. is now in prison for the events that happened in, in the first Easy Money film. And it's pretty much him trying to live. He wants to live his life right now, and he, you know he's just trying to get on the better path. And yet he, he keeps getting pulled in deeper and deeper into the crime world. He, you know, and he just wants, he, he wants out, but he keeps getting pulled back in. And it's a story of him just, you know, trying to deal with what's going on. Um, it's really kind of a, a sloppy kind of a sequel, part, part two of the franchise. Because it doesn't really introduce you well to the characters like the first film did. It kind of like just starts like... You know, like, say if you're watching a movie and you watch it and you, and you pause it in the middle of it to go to the bathroom and come back. And it's kind of like that. Like, how you start it again. But just imagine starting this movie kind of like that. You're just starting it. And it's like, okay, what's going on right now? Like, they don't, they don't bring you into the characters again. They don't, like, show you what happened before kind of thing if you, don't really, if you don't remember what happened in the first film. But that's easy money, hard to kill. Looks good on Blu-ray. Just kind just, the film is just kind of sloppy in my opinion. But, uh, yeah, I can't, I can't really recommend it, but it's just kind of like a, eh, kind of movie again. Easy Money, Hard to Kill here on Blu-ray. And uh, next up from Image Entertainment is The Outsider here on Blu-ray, uh, starring Shannon Elizabeth and James Caan, who you guys all know from the TV show Las Vegas and a slew of other things. And, uh, of course, Shannon Elizabeth from the American Pie films. And uh, in this film, it's pretty much about this one guy... He find you know he's like a an army veteran and uh, he he's relieved from duty because he finds out that his daughter died and he's going to go and like bury her and things like that and as he goes to the place to identify the body he finds out hey that's not my daughter you know and he, then it's him pretty much trying to find out where his daughter is and what happened to his daughter it was really kind of a, a generic action flick um it's, it's kind of like you know by the books. You know, when, when it comes to the stuff that was happening in this film, James Caan is pretty badass as, as like, the bad guy of the film. And uh, he, he was kind of cool, but the script was, he's kind of used a lot more work. 
it kind of felt like one of those movies that you would see come out in like the mid 90s or something you know what I mean it, it just kind of felt really really generic to me but I, I love Shannon Elizabeth I think she was kind of kind of cool in this one to be honest with you compared just to see her in American Pie and a couple of other things like Cursed she was okay in this for the little role that she did have but that's the outsider here on blu-ray meh all right guys last up for my update today is Tom Holland's Twisted Tales here on DVD you guys all know Tom Tom Holland he's a director of the Langoliers and Thinner and uh, Child's Play and things like that and this is his new anthology horror film that stars like William Forsythe, Daniel Harris and a slew of other you know horror movie icons and in this uh, anthology horror film it has nine short films mixed with uh, Tom Holland introducing each of the films on here I thought this one was actually very cool very entertaining to watch it didn't look like they had very much money shooting this film like they kind of shot him on like weird look like they shot him on weird kind of cameras and things like that but there's some really cool shorts in here like the one with Daniel Harris like getting mad at her boyfriend and wanting her boyfriend to die and making a wish to the devil or like a, a devil's helper and there's another one on here where there's like this uh, one guy that's all mad that he thinks his wife is cheating on him with his best friend yet he's making a bomb in his garage and all the craziness that ensues from there there's one called pizza guy there's like a lot of really cool uh, inventive short films on here that I really did like but there are of course there's some weak ones in the bunch but d definitely check out Tom Holland's Twisted Tales if you guys love horror, horror movie anthologies it, it, it is worth watching just a little it just feels like a little on the cheap side like they were just really not putting a lot of money into it a lot of effort went into it yes but it's like they didn't look like they have a lot of money to back it check it out if you're a fan of Tom Holland I, I, I enjoyed it for what it was but guys that's all I have to show you guys today for my uh, new blu-ray DVD update video please hit that like button if you guys like supporting my videos but guys please uh, leave a comment down below letting me know what you guys thought about what I picked up or what you guys picked up recently. See you guys next time. Thanks you for watching.